think cash is king in, in, in a world of uncertainty and if we can together wrap some certainty around the indications to date that our compounds represent with that capital, we'll be better off for it. Recky Pharmaceuticals has created a class of synthetic antibiotics that could potentially ward off the global health threat posed by superbugs and emerging viral pathogens that are resistant to antibiotics currently available. The company is developing two compounds. The first, Recky 327, is for bacterial infections and the second, Recky 529, is for viral infections. Joining me to discuss more is CEO James Graham. James, welcome to TCN TV. Hello, thank you for having me. Now, Recky Pharmaceuticals claims the potency of the broad spectrum antibiotics uh, it is developing does not diminish even with repeated use due to them being synthetic. Why can't superbugs that have over time built resistance to currently available antibiotics also do the same thing? to synthetic antibiotics? We begin with the privilege of a position of power. Uh, we have began with first principles in mind and designed what we wanted and not reliant on what's given to us in nature. So with what we wanted, we created a unique mechanism of action, which is attracted to the proteinaceous layer of bacteria, binds to those bacteria or the proteins of viral envelopes, and interact with it regardless of its lipid outer layer, regardless of how that those cells mutate, which they always have and they always will. And in, and in that interaction causes those cells to burst. It's a very natural process coming from a place of quite an unnatural beginning being synthetic. So existing drugs, specific lock and key fit, mutates, doesn't work. Ours overcomes that cellular mutation and begins from a place of true power and in all of our studies to date, able to overcome that cellular mutation and bacterial resistance. If we can look more closely, closely at stage one testing of your lead compound, Recy 327, on the 10th of September, Recy announced that it had selected South Australia's CMAX clinical research as the independent facility, which will conduct a phase one clinical trial of this lead compound, Recy 327, what does the phase one trial entail and what attracted Recky um, to CMAX's facility? The phase one study is uh, on 48 healthy individuals, you and me. They've got, say, 30,000 of them on their uh, recruitment list. And actually, I, I just responded to, to one on my side. We're inundated with requests, which is very kind. Um, but really what it is, is we are intravascularly infusing Recy 327. The primary focus of that drug is sepsis, and sepsis is bacteria in the blood. Spreads very quickly, number one most expensive condition treated in health. So the, the challenge of existing drugs is to get on top of bacterial infections in the blood. They're having extraordinary challenge in doing that. Our studies to date have demonstrated great capability. We want to step that capability up into humans now. And it's at uh, the Adelaide facility of CMAX that has world leading um, regulatory uh, capability, as well as a significant patient population uh, amongst the healthy individuals that we first start in to assess our compound. Now, Recky indicated the first subjects to be screened in the phase one trial of Recy 327 will be in the December quarter. Do you have any aspirational targets for the start up of subsequent phase two and phase three trials? So phase one, it's safety. It's good. You, you have to do it for regulatory purposes, but you're not really helping people. You're just following a regulatory pathway. The ability to help people and see what that could mean on an international basis running in parallel in Western Australia. That, that's what I get excited about. Investors get excited about our revenues. Uh, Recky also already has a, a manufacturing facility in Sydney that will produce its anti-infectives for both domestic and international markets. Realistically, though, any production-related revenue streams from Recky's suite of compounds are still some years away. In the meantime, will some licensing and or partnership agreements be signed? This is appropriately a, a capital growth journey, assuming positive news flow and, and everything we seek. Um, the natural basis of drug development is obviously each stage, you get closer and closer to that market and the capital, hopefully, uh, capital growth hopefully reflects that. 
Um, the beauty about an expanding program uh, in the space of infectious diseases is we really have a minimum of four primary indications working in parallel to each other with a lot of data share synergy between each of those. Now, what that means is not only do you have the upside opportunity and downside risk protection, but you start to look geographically across those indications. So here they go back to pylori, by example, which is stomach ulcers in humans, huge patient population through Asia, many, many millions, tens of millions. Um, what this could mean for that region and what it could mean for us as a potential license or, or, or something similar to that um, is substantial. So yes, those big parties, if you know, it's obvious we're talking about pharmaceutical companies here uh, in conversation with us, uh, whether it will make strategic sense now or a little further into the future, we'll see. But um, the unmet medical need is there and that's obvious. Uh, now, earlier this month, Recce announced it had received an Innovation Connections grant of around 38000 under the Australian Government's Entrepreneurs Program. Is this something that you'll be pursuing, more government-supplied research and development funding? Um, and what would current studies need to show in order to secure future funding? I don't think we operate our business with a goal of getting a few, you know, nice golden trophies, call them grants. I think we operate our business to really deliver good results. And I think the studies that we do with that uh, group or those groups, as well as other groups, is kind of where I like to see our capital gain and, and significant opportunities in the near term. But we'll, we'll see what the grant space holds for us. Now, with R&D spending on Recce's compounds to continue at pace over the next year, it was no surprise the company recently announced a $17 million increase in its existing standby controlled placement agreement with top six shareholder acuity capital. Fast forward to today, a trading halt, capital raising reports, share issue coming up. What is the motivation behind this additional raising? Uh, broadening Recce's shareholder base, a, a pointer to upcoming R&D spending or perhaps something else? I, I have long aspired to work with a, or to have a significant institution uh, as a major shareholder of ours. And I say a significant, I'm referring to particularly the, the one that will be disclosed shortly. And there, there came a day very recently where, um, you know, our, I guess, kind of courting with them resulted in a, we want to be your major shareholder. How can we go about that? And, and that really resulted in us thinking quickly of to how we can go about it, but also to allow wherever possible others to participate in, in such a proposition. So it's at a dollar thirty per share. Um, the group coming in has uh, invested a significant portion of that book. I wish I could name it. It will be named in due course. And what that will really mean is um, a oh, minimum of two years of funding, an absolute surety to... Um, deliver on our many goals and objectives and really the upside opportunity that comes with those. Uh, I, I think cash is king in, an, in a world of uncertainty and if we can together wrap some certainty around the indications to date that our compounds represent with that capital, we'll all be better off for it. So I'm so thrilled to have they and, and others because there are other institutions investing alongside as part of our new register. Now, investors got quite excited by recent news that Recce 327 and Recce 529 compounds had delivered concentration-dependent reductions in the COVID-19 virus. As a result of this development, the Recce 327 and Recce 529 compounds will now progress to, um, as you call it, a gold standard in vivo COVID-19 infection study in animals. Um, given the immense pressure to find treatments for COVID-19, how quickly are you expecting these results to come through? Yeah, that was a that was a thrill, and I say a thrill because it's nice to get ahead in our programs. But really, our, our technical team and I represent the commercial side of the team. Our technical team was going, "It's going to work. Of course, it's going to work. It's just a virus. We've worked on viruses." with a similar RNA profile recently. It's just a virus we, we attach a little emotion to due to obviously the pandemic around us. So what that really means is yes, uh, dose dependent efficacy, as you increase the concentration, the efficacy goes up, but in parallel, the importance is that the toxicity remains extremely low. You're not getting efficacy because you 
poisoned or something like that. It's because the interreaction process is occurring. So what that means is we now step um, across into uh, ferrets, which is a gold standard model of assessing um, coronavirus efficacy. We do that in the United States. Uh, that's assessing a nasal administration. So uh, getting onto the, into the respiratory tract on top of the virus in the um, lungs of these animals. And in parallel in Australia, we aim to be assessing uh, intravascularly in the same, same species of animals. Now what that would, would mean or does mean ultimately when the results come through is we've got two programs assessing the optimum dosing against coronavirus. If there is demonstrated efficacy in vivo in these animals against coronavirus, and by example, that same formula is being administered into healthy human individuals, what that could mean to further expedite our program um, is something we strategically are, are working on. So a lot of opportunity, a lot of shots on goal, and, and I think a fair bit of news flow to come from it. Look, finally, your share price. Six months ago, the recce share price was under 30 cents. Today, it's more than five times that, despite your um, new classes of synthetic anti-infectives only now just starting a multi-phase testing process. How much of this rally is attributable to investors buying any pharma stock that has a COVID-19 thematic attached to it? Or what do you put the interest in recce down to? Oh, I think it's the recognition of the importance of new medicine and the importance of medicine goes across the entire infectious disease framework that we operate in. Um, you know, gone are the days where you get one uh, uh, course of antibiotics. You now get the same course with many follow on repeats to get over that same problem. And the reason that happens is the drugs don't work. And that's increasingly a threat. We've said it for many years, the, the experts in the field have said it, and now people are going, oh goodness, there are viral threats around us, there are bacterial threats going and we need new medicine. Well, thank you so much for your insights today and all the best for your growth plans ahead. Many thanks. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV and drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, be sure to send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.